Hi, we are Team O from Singapore. This is our RCJ Rescue Line presentation. All footage in this presentation was filmed in accordance to safe management measures at the time of filming. Here's what we'll be sharing with you today. Let's start with our team and what each of us are good at. Following that, I'll elaborate on our design philosophy and background information. After which, I'll go in depth into our robot's features and functions before Kenneth takes over for the program. Last but not least, we'll end off with the test runs, learning points, and credits. So let's start on our team. Presenting to you, Team OO. I'm Thaddeus, the head of engineering. I created Singapore's second strongest robot and I can visualize ingenious designs. I'm Kenneth, the head of programming. I'm an experienced programmer with almost nine years of robotics experience. I'm Ryan, the head of logistics and content editing. I am well versed in both building and programming and can complete a wide variety of tasks. The three of us participated in RoboCup Singapore. Now, let's go into our design philosophy. We decided that we were going to modify a proven design rather than starting from scratch when building our robot. We also wanted this said robot to be compact so as to maximize our space utilization. The program was also going to be kept simple so that we can make tweaks easily. Our objective for this competition was to score at least half of the points available. Now that you know about our mindset, let's go into some background information. We eventually settled on modifying our World Cup Singapore robot for this competition. The reason being is very proven and it has gone through many iterations. Although it, every robot has its weaknesses, we felt that we could address them well and build on its strengths as well. The, this choice also meant that we had a base program to work with. This helped minimize our testing time as well. Now, presenting to you our robot for ro R RCAP 2021, the giraffe. The giraffe version four is a result of constant improvement. From version one all the way through version four, we've made modifications to its base of support, its center of gravity, and its ball collection tool. Each time we address the robot's weaknesses while maintaining its strengths. This is why we feel version 4, the giraffe we are using for this competition, is more optimized than ever. We utilized the engineering design process to get to this final design. The four stages we used were planning, prototyping, building, and testing. The name giraffe came about due to the original robot type and color. Here are some of the specifications. Here is a video of our robot. I'll explain certain design choices along the way. At the front of the robot, you can see a one-way door. This lets the boss in, but not out. Inside the cage, you can also see the two light sensors for line tracing. We mounted them as close to the wheels as possible for more accuracy. Speaking of which, the wheels, in addition to the ball bearing at the rear, allow for a large base of support. This, combined with a low center of gravity, helps to keep the robot stable. The brain mounted at the back also allows for easy access for programming. Although not featured in this shot, mounted on the top of the third motor, the one in this shot right now, will be the IR sensor to detect obstacles in front of the robot. Now, Anna will explain to you about our program. I'll now explain to you about our program. First, I'll share about our line tracing program for both fields. What our line tracing program does is actually quite simple. First, the two sensors check for the reflected light intensity of the surface below it. It then subtracts it from the average of the black and white values for that particular sensor. This eliminates any inconsistencies between the sensor values. One value is then subtracted from the other to find the difference in light intensity. If the difference is negative, the board will turn left, and if it is positive, the board will turn right. A matriculation block would change the sensitivity of the program to better change the line. For 
For the vacation zone in field one, we used a one-way door to cut the balls on the field. This allows the balls to enter the cage but not leave it. To pick up the balls, we program the robot to move in a sweeping motion to collect the balls. The robot then moves the respective to a respective evacuation point. For the entry and exit from the rescue area, we use the silver line on the play field, which uh, de when detected, it will increase the reflector light intensity and uh, it will then switch the ball pickup program. After the balls have been placed in the evacuation area, the ball will move to a green line, where it will then switch back to the line chasing program and it will trace to the end. These are the videos of our test runs. This is the video of our robot line tracing using the double PID. Do note that all these videos are at two times speed. This is a video of our robot picking up the victims. This is the video of our robot avoiding obstacles. This is the video of our robot testing in the wet weather. This is the video of our trial run for Playfield 1. For this run, there are no victims in the evacuation zone and there is no evacuation point. This is the video of our trial run for Playfield 2. As you can see, our robot can autonomously and competently complete both fields. Now, here are some of our learning points from this competition. Personally, I felt that at times, the robot has flaws which are hard to resolve given the restrictions in place. We therefore have to work together to brainstorm ideas and find the ideal design. I've also learned that teamwork is the key to success. I've learned that the program may have tiny loopholes that affect the performance of the robot yet they are difficult to find. Patience is also crucial when it comes to programming so that I can have a clear mind to think. Sometimes the process of making the program can be very long and tedious, thus requiring large amounts of resilience to remain focused on the task. Mutual respect and trust is important for the team to be efficient. Here are some of the credits. Nanhua High School, Nanhua Robotics Club, Google Sites, Samsung Video Editor, and the Lego Company. We've come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Please check out our Instagram at RoboTeamOwo for more footages. This is Team OWO signing off.